wanted to chat to you today about Article 13.5 claims under the EFSA Health Claims Regulation. What kind of claims does Article 13.5 cover? Hi, Shawnee. Yeah, I mean, I think the distinction between Article 13.5 and 14 is, is understood by some people. I mean, Article 14 covers disease risk reduction and children's health, and Article 13.5 five are the claims that are based on newly developed scientific evidence. So Article 13.5 brings with it the opportunity for proprietary claims. And by proprietary, it means you have the, the possibility to get five years of data protection if you can show that your health claim requires that data that is yours and newly developed by you. So I've heard the phrase reproducible cause and effect in relation to opinions on health claims from EFSA. What does reproducible cause and effect mean? Well, I think we know that EFSA says that human intervention studies are the top of the hierarchy that informs their decision making. And, you know, the reason for that and the why is because cause and effect is the demonstration of the link between the consumption of the functional food or food ingredient and its benefit. And to demonstrate cause and effect, you have to do that through human intervention studies. The word reproducible takes it to another level because it's effectively EFSA asking for that reproducibility factor that says you can't do that in just sort of one short study. It has to come from multiple studies potentially. So what you're saying is that if I only have one well-designed uh, study that demonstrates an effect, that's not enough to obtain an uh, Article 13.5 health claim? Yeah, Shawnee, I think by definition that reproducibility is not something that you can achieve with one study, however large that study is going to be. And we see that in EFSA's opinion sometimes because we see EFSA comments negatively on um applications for health claims where all the research is done at one centre or by one research group, one lead investigator. So they're looking for that reproducibility factor that comes from more than just one study. Okay, so one study isn't enough. How about those claims that have received positive opinions from EFSA? And um, how many studies do they include in their submission dossiers? Yes, yeah, so when we look at the, the human intervention studies, we can see that to date there's only been one health claim that was approved on the basis of two human intervention studies. And I think in that case it succeeded because it was a claim um, on gut function and the product itself didn't need to be absorbed into the uh, system to have its effect. It acted locally in the gut. So that was quite a unique situation. But if we look at some of the positive health claims, we can see that on a number of occasions, three, four, five uh, human intervention studies has been enough to to get a, a health claim. And I think it's important also to note that sometimes applications with twice that number, you know, 10 or more studies have been unsuccessful. Um, so it can be influential if you can show elements such as dose response, um, if you can show mode of action. But in terms of hu human intervention studies, if you can deliver three, four or five uh, human intervention studies, that's been proven to be enough to get a health claim. So what you're saying is that it's all about quality rather than quantity? Absolutely. I think that the, the thing that's been missing for many of the claims that have gone to EFSA in the last decade has been that consistency factor that comes from quality. We see, you know, methodological limitations to use EFSA's language cited in study after study where they believe that that quality is lacking from some of the studies. Um, what too many of the past applications did, Shawnee, is that they changed small things from study to study that gives no consistency and no pattern but the quality of, and being able to say that you know this study after study is consistently demonstrating the same effect is so important and, and I think the best advice that Atlantia sometimes can give to our clients is to say that if you get a positive study that delivers um, a, a proof of cause, cause and effect don't mess around with it too much, you know, go ahead and, and reproduce that study, do a very similar or identical study, um, and you're already well on your way to a health claim. But too many companies have changed dose or they've changed the formulation between their studies. So focus on consistency and quality is what it's all about, Sean. Thanks, Steve. That is a fantastic insight into how many studies that we really need to have a successful EFSA health claim. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.